Today, you'll learn how to create some awesome 3D title animations inside of After Effects using the 3D workspace. But you will also learn about some cool effects that we use inside of Premiere Pro to create some 2D and 3D titles. If you're ready, let's jump on in. So let's create this 3D title sequence in After Effects. So here I have this empty After Effects composition opened up. And first we need to create a camera. Let's right click here on the empty space down in the timeline and choose new camera. A window will pop up with basically a bunch of different options here, but I'm just going to choose a preset. So these are basically like focal lengths of real camera lenses. So 200 millimeters would be extremely zoomed in and 50 millimeters is more of a wide angle lens. So I'll pick 35 for now, but if you're actually pairing this effect with some footage that you actually shot, it would be good to use the same focal length as the camera that you use to shoot the scene with. So right now we have the camera layer but we don't actually see the camera itself, right? Because in this view, we're actually looking through at what the camera sees. But if we go to this drop down menu here, if, if I change this from camera one to a custom view, I can hold alt on a PC or option on a Mac and drag the left mouse button to move around in 3D space. And then I can use the right mouse button here to zoom in and out. And here's our camera floating in the void. But if you actually wanna utilize this camera, you need to learn how to use and take advantage of everything inside this 3D space. My recommended workspace for cameras is to switch to two views. So that way we can have a custom view on one side and camera one on the other. This way we can work in 3D space without messing up our camera position. So now let's create the text in the 3D space. Let's hit Control T or Command T to enable the type tool. And then we can type out the first title that we want to animate. And then we can do it two more times. So now that we have the three text layers inside of our comp, our plan is to animate the camera through 3D space to reveal each text. First of all, we need to make each text 3D. So let's press this button to enable 3D. And if you don't see 3D, toggle this switch below so that way you have these options. And while all the text is selected, let's go to geometry options. And here I can add a bevel and give my text a little bit more depth and it will be applied to all three of them. Then we can move the text away from each other using these screen handles to control the position and the rotation. Also an important tip, when I'm setting up my scene like this, I like to turn on this draft 3D right here. So that way I can see the grid lines. This also lowers the render quality so you can have some smoother playback. So for the first text here, I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. So in the beginning, I can have the camera start upside down and spin it back to normal while moving into the second text here. And this is also a good reminder to plan out how you want the shot to unfold. So that way you know how to position them correctly right off the bat. So once everything is in the right spot, it's now time to add lighting. But before that, it's important that we change to After Effects new advanced 3D render, which will allow me to create an environmental light out of any HDRI image. If you wanna learn more about how to use HDRI our images as environmental lights inside of After Effects 3D workspace, you can check out this video right here after this one. In this case, instead of using HDRI, I'm just going to stick with the default light and I might just bump up the intensity of it and rotate it to find a spot where all our text is well lit. So now if I turn off Draft 3D, I can now see some shadows. If you don't see any here, try going to the render options and hit the fit to scene button and After Effects will scale the shadow box to the area of your scene. And now my friends, is a good time to animate the camera. We could just animate and keyframe the camera layer itself. But what I like to do is actually create a null object and then make it 3D. And then I can use this pick whip tool to parent our camera to the null object. This will allow me to make the null object the camera controller. And you'll see how I make use of this in just a sec. Let's set the keyframes to the nulls position and rotation, and I'll animate it to fly through this first text, revealing the second text behind. And for our second animation, I'm actually going to create another null object and parent the first null to this one. And then I'm going to keyframe it to have the camera fly up to our last text layer. So the reason why I created a separate null for each movement is that way I can overlap the null's movement. So it has a more continuous movement 
and I can make adjustments separately to each movement if I need to. So there's just more flexibility. To make it even more smoother, we can go to the graph editor here and this will show the graph of whichever keyframe parameter is selected. So we can switch to the speed graph, select the keyframes and press the easy ease button. We can pull these handles to create a custom ease in ease out motion with the camera. And feel free to mess around with this until you get your desired movement. So in this case, I like to have the position and rotation to ease at slightly different times. Let's check it out. And let's spice things up by adding a little camera shake. On the camera layer itself, let's hold Alt or Option and press the stopwatch in front of the position parameter. Here we can add in a wiggle expression. The first number is the frequency, and the second one is the amount. So if I put 50 and 5, for example, we'll get a fast but not so strong shake. Seems like the cameraman is a little bit nervous today. So this is obviously way too much, so I'll bring it back down. And now it's nice and subtle. So we're happy with the camera movements, right? But now it's time to add in a background. I'll drop in a photo of the stars and push it back and scale it up in 3D space. I can also apply the motion tile effects to extend this layer. Make sure that the background is in frame on our main camera throughout the entire sequence. And as you can see, when the camera looks up, we lose the background. So as a simple fix for this, we can duplicate the layer and move the second one to the top. Now, since the background is mostly black in this case, the border between the two of them will not be as noticeable as you can see here, but I can also create an adjustment layer here on top of the background layers and add a bit of lens blur effect to help blend them together. And that's pretty much the foundation of creating 3D title animation, but it wouldn't be a true gal tutorial if we didn't take it that extra step further. So what we did here is actually use the After Effects CC particle world to create floating stars in our 3D space for our camera to fly through. If you want a full tutorial on this, be sure to leave a star emoji down below and give this video a thumbs up. If it gets to a thousand likes, we'll make a video on this particle effect. To top it all off, we need to enable motion blur. And wait a minute, it's not affecting our 3D text. Well, bad news. The new advanced 3D render here doesn't actually support motion blur yet, but it's no biggie. We have a workaround. We'll just create an adjustment layer right here on top of everything and add the CC force motion effect to it. So you know the basics of creating 3D tiles, but what if you wanna create some cool transitions with these 3D titles? But you might be like, whoa, this is a lot of different steps for After Effects. I just want something fast inside of Premiere Pro that I can drag and drop and have a cool 3D looking style animation. So my team and I use this plugin called Film Impact that comes with a ton of different transitions and motion effects and smart tools that apply to our clips inside of our timeline like native Premiere Pro effects. For example, if I drag in this 3D roll impact on my text layer here and I drag it out to make the animation longer or shorter, and then I can go to effect controls to customize it using these parameters or better yet my favorite button, I can hit surprise. And this will randomize the settings to create something new. You can also apply these effects to graphics or images. For example, here I have my toolkit logo. Let's drag this new effect called the 3D rotate effect onto the clip. And at first you just get this really boring, slow, basic motion. But if you hit that magic surprise button, you can get all sorts of cool results. And if you scroll down to motion control and use the animation settings, you can make it a continuous loop. And now we have a really cool looping animation that just took a couple seconds. Some of my other favorite film impact effects are the pop motion, roll, flip motion, and that classic page peel transition. That one's cool. And all these effects come with their own motion blur engine to make it nice and smooth. You can even connect a sequence of titles or clips together with page peels to get an effect like this. So a film impact effect has become an essential part of me and my team's workflow. Like seriously, it has saved our butt multiple times when we don't have time to create our own custom animation inside of After Effects and 
It can save your butt too. You can try out Film Impact for 30 days of unrestricted access. So you can test out its full capability. And then if you're like, okay, I wanna get this in the workflow, you can use my link below to get 10% off. A huge thanks to Film Impact for making Premiere Pro more powerful and for sponsoring the segment of the video. All right, now let's get back into some 3D transitions and After Effects. So Premiere Pro is kind of like our home base, right? It's the place where we put all the different clips together and tell our story. And then on occasion, we're like, wait, we need to create a cooler effect. And that's where we go to After Effects to either do rotoscoping, motion tracking, or maybe 3D titles like this video, and then bring it back into Premiere Pro. And what's perfect because of the Adobe ecosystem is that you can connect Premiere Pro to After Effects with Dynamic Link. They go together like a perfect couple. So one of the effects that's much easier to do inside of After Effects is a fly through 3D transition. I have this clip here of a person acting shocked. The idea is to have the camera fly through the mouth, which takes you to the next shot with the title. Let's get the initial setup out of the way. Let's create a new camera and drop the footage into the comp and make it a 3D layer. You got that part, good job. So from here, let's duplicate the footage and hide the top one for now. Let's press the G key, which is the shortcut to the pen tool, and let's draw a quick mask around the inside edge of her mouth. And we can set it to subtract. And here we can add a keyframe to the mask path and then we can adjust the mask following the motion, but only to the point where you think the transition will end. Then here we can add a circle mask around the bottom here to make the tongue visible again. And then we can bump up the feather and also keyframe its path. And now we can make our top layer visible again, and we can keyframe its opacity from 100 to zero right after she opens her mouth. This way we don't have to worry about the mask before the transition starts. Now we can drop in our second clip here and push it back in 3D space. Now I chose a clip on purpose that had this fast inwards motion. So that way, when I pushed my 3D camera through, the motion was more fluid, right? So this time I will not create a null object to be the camera controller because this time we only have one movement. So let's just keyframe the camera's position, animating it to fly through the mouth, stopping right in front of the next clip. Let's also go back to our handy speed graph here to start slow and end fast to match with the original movement from the second clip. On the second clip, let's keyframe its opacity to slowly reveal as the camera gets close. And since we're using After Effects classic 3D render instead of the advanced 3D space, here we can actually take the motion blur box on all these layers and it actually works. So we kind of nailed this transition, but we're not stopping there. No, no, no. Let's take it even further and let's have a 3D text fly in on our second shot. So let's start by pre-comping our second footage and make sure to leave all attributes out in the main comp to not mess up our transition. Going into our pre-comp, we're essentially creating a brand new 3D scene here. So you know the drill, we need to first create a new camera and add in 3D text. Now I want the text to be right above the water. So let's move the camera down and rotate it a bit to mirror the camera angle from the original footage. From here, you can do whatever you want. So for me, I'll animate the text position and I'll have it fly into view from far away. And as you may have noticed, we didn't make the footage here 3D, so we don't have to worry about the text going behind it. So our text is kind of looking a little bland. So let's change the render to advanced 3D and add an environmental light to the scene. But this time I'll connect it to this HDR image. And this image kind of has the same sky as my footage. So let's rotate the light just a little bit to find a spot where the text is well lit. Now we can select all the layers except the footage layer here and we can pre-comp it. Then drop the CC force motion blur effect on top just like we did before. And let's also keyframe the opacity so it will reveal itself as it gets closer to the camera. For some finishing touches, let's go back to the main comp and add a little bit of color grading, maybe a handheld camera preset, and here's the result. 
So now you have an understanding of how to work with 3D titles and 3D space inside of After Effects. And you can totally go crazy with this and have the camera go through multiple different footages and sequences. This is just touching the surface, right? But remember, if you don't have time to do these types of shots and you wanna get some cool effects and title motion, this is when we rely on Film Impact inside of Premiere Pro. But remember, you can always use Premiere Pro and After Effects together to do some simple effects. And we hope that this tutorial helped you out. Oh, and by the way, did I mention that you can get 30 days free of Film Impact? Link below. Anyway, if you want some more After Effects tutorials like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And as always, keep creating better video with a gal. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.